What's up guys? Today we're gonna go over how to make a four x four door. So this door, we can open on the outside of the base. We can go to the inside and close it with another lever. We can flip the same lever, it'll open, and then we go back outside and we can close it from the outside as well. This design is compatible with both Java and the Bedrock variations of the game. Um, I think Bedrock is just called Minecraft now um, instead of like Windows 10 or something. Uh, if you're in Java Edition, I will link a different design. That design is just a little bit simpler and easier to build. Uh, so I'd recommend checking that one out. If you don't know which version you're on or you know you're on Bedrock Edition, then stick with this video. For the materials, you're going to need 16 blocks that are used for the door itself. Uh, so I use gold blocks here, but really it's any block that could be pushed and pulled by pistons. You're going to need 8 sticky pistons, um, 8 slime blocks, 8 honey blocks, 12 redstone torches, 2 comparators, 10 redstone repeaters, and 2 levers. You're also going to need a handful of redstone. Um, I would say just like bring a stack or so. Uh, you're going to need some sort of non-stick block. Um, this A non-stick block is a block that does not stick to the slime or honey blocks when they're gliding through. And then you're also going to need um, some sort of opaque block to work with uh, because we use the opaque blocks redstone properties for some areas. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is place the actual door itself. So I'm gonna use gold blocks for the blocks that actually move when the door opens. And I'm just gonna put a four by four area down where I want the door to be. Um, I don't have a base, it's just completely flat, so it doesn't matter where I put it, um, but otherwise put the blocks where you want them to be. Um, then the wall is gonna have to be out by one block um, and we're going to go over and it'll have to be six blocks long. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, the redstone goes to here. So if you want to like make a wall around it, you're going to have to go by another block out for seven. On the other side, I do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six or seven if you want to encapsulate it completely. Um, so this will be the outside of my base. Then the inside of my base, um, I will go one, two, three, and then place the inner wall. So we have three blocks in between the outer wall and the inner wall. And then I will do the same thing just so that I have a reference of where to do stuff. Uh, next, I think this is optional, but it's just going to be a lot faster if we carve out um, between the walls here. If we just carve out three blocks down, um, so in my case, all of the grass here, just because we're going to have to place a lot of redstone down there and it's just going to go faster if we get rid of all of it. All right, so next we want to place uh, slime and honey blocks um, on the inside of the door. So like this is the outside of my base. On the inside, we can place Simon Honey Bucks kind of in a checkerboard pattern where we do um, two by two, and then we do two by two and make sure that they are alternating slime and honey. Um, so that you have a pattern that is like this. Um, this is just because we can keep the uh, symmetry there um, and to uh, make sure that the pistons aren't trying to pull or push too many blocks. Um, you could theoretically do something like this um, and that might work. Um, but it might just be awkward and there's no reason to do that because it'll functionally be the same. Okay, so next what we want to do is place the pistons. Um, so from we're, from these two blocks right here, we're going to place pistons facing into it with two blocks in between. So I'm going to go out by one, two, three, four, five and place temporary blocks for me to be able to place them. And then we have uh, pistons facing into that one and pistons facing into this one. Uh, so we have you know, two pistons uh, like that with two blocks in between it and the, the sticky block. And we have one for this upper left quadrant and one for this lower left quadrant. Um, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So one, two, three, four, five, we'll do two. And the pistons need to be facing into the door. Um, so we have something like this. Make sure that your pistons are like each pulling a quadrant. Okay, so now the next thing that we need to do is place some blocks so that we can put the redstone torches and stuff down. Um, so I'm gonna need to grab obsidian, which I don't have. So I'll grab obsidian. Um, the reason for the obsidian is that when there are blocks that are next to these sticky blocks, we need to make sure that the sticky blocks don't pull them with it uh, because that can break some stuff. But we need to put some redstone next to it. So we need to use obsidian. Uh, so on the upper pistons right here, um, on these two, we're just gonna place any opaque block uh, make sure it's not like glass or something, but otherwise, as long as it's opaque, it doesn't matter what you use. Um, you could even use grass if you want to. And then the one uh, on the inner part, so on this block right here, we're going to place obsidian. Um, so the one going into the door. Um, likewise, on this side, we're going to do the same thing. So opaque blocks and then the obsidian. And then we're going to go down by two blocks and do the same thing. Oh, whoops. 
So two opaque blocks and then obsidian, and then we're going to do two opaque blocks and then obsidian. Uh, and then we're going to place some redstone torches on all of these lower ones. Um, and the reason for this is because uh, in bedrock condition, we can't power the pistons easily uh, with like a repeater. So we have a redstone torch in this row, which will power this row of pistons. But then the torches also power these blocks, which then power the, this row of pistons. Um, though, so this saves us from having to power each individual piston themselves. Um, we can do it all in one go using redstone torches like this. Okay, so even further down now, so under these ones, we place, uh, so under the inner ones, uh, meaning the ones closest to the door, we place two opaque blocks under these two, um, and we can place torches on those ones as well. And then on this uh, outer one, so the one furthest away from the door, we place a opaque block uh, in the middle that's kind of like floating here and diagonally up, um, which is still under this one. And we place a torch on the like face there that will then uh, have the torch face into this block. Um, I'm sorry, this is when it gets, starts getting complicated, so just bear with me. Um, so on the right side of the door, on um, this side of the door, we have uh, a torch system that looks like this, which is under just these three torches. Uh, and the reason that this one is in the middle will become evident when we start laying down the rest of it. On the other side, we do the same thing. So the inner blocks, uh, the ones close to the door, we do two opaque blocks and we put the pistons, or sorry, the rights and torches. And then we have this block in the middle, which is on that side, and we put a torch facing into this outer block here. Okay. So now for some of the redstone, we need to start uh, filling in some of these blocks if you happen to carve them out. Um, so what we need to do is put a red a block, it can be opaque or not, um, right under this like inner torch, so the one closest to the door here. Um, likewise, we would do it here, but I'll, I'll do one side at a time, but this would be the inner one as well. And then we kind of have redstone that goes around, or sorry, uh, opaque blocks that go around here. I don't think it matters what's here. And then we put an opaque block there. And we also put one here as well. Um, so we have a system that allows us to place redstone dust that faces into the block that this torch is on. And then we can go around. And then we go up. And this uh, level should be directly into this block with the redstone torch so that we can put a repeater that will then turn the torch off when it's on. Um, this has to still have a delay of two also. Then we go down with this redstone dust and these ones should face into this redstone torch. Uh, we put two repeaters here, one with a delay of four in the front and one with a delay of two. Um, so the system kind of looks like this. It's kind of hard to like give you a good, a good screenshot. <laughs> Uh, but it should be able to wire like that so that this dust is facing to that one. This goes around. We have the repeater facing into this middle block. And then we have these repeaters facing into this uh, block right here. Um, you can you can check that it works. If you like then if you like temporarily power this whole thing, it should turn off all of these torches. Um, and then it should turn them back on when you get rid of it. Okay. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Um, so we have this block that can face into this torch block here. We go around, and then we go up another two blocks, so we can go around. Um, this one will face into this middle block with the redstone torch on it, a delay of two. Redstone dust there, and then we do redstone repeater there with a delay of uh, four. And then this should face into this one, and then we have a redstone repeater of a delay two there. Uh, we could try this side again, too, just to make sure that they work properly. So all the torches should turn off if I temporarily power this redstone line. And then they should turn on when I get rid of the powering. Um, you can also check to make sure that it works. by If you power it, it should push it out by two blocks. And then when you get rid of it, it should pull it in by two blocks. Um, so that looked really weird when I did it, but it did work. Likewise, this side should pull it, push it out by two blocks, and then it should pull it back in by two blocks. Okay, so we have the mechanism that can open and close the actual door, but we don't actually have a way to like open and close the door. Um, nothing is attached to these two things. So next what we do, um, if you left this carved out um, three blocks down, you should have like an indention here relative to this block. Um, we're gonna utilize this. So in the middle of the door, we have these two blocks right here. Down here, we're going to place uh, opaque blocks there. And then we're going to place blocks in this fashion and we're going to put some stuff on top of it. Um, these two will be redstone and they can stay indented. Um, and these can also be indented. I think it depends more like where you put your levers where it matters the most. 
Um, so we might have to move a couple of these down here in a second. Uh, but we could put these down. And then uh, on these ones, we put dust. Uh, and I'm sorry, actually, the one immediately off of these two blocks right here should be a repeater. Um, so you have these two blocks, and when they get powered, uh, the repeater will grab the signal. And it will go over. And likewise, we do on the other side, and this one will go over. The reason we have to have the repeaters is because uh, these will have a signal strength of one. So we have to immediately refresh the signal uh, with the repeater. It won't, it won't reach anywhere else if we don't do that. Now, on this little thing, which, again, should be in the middle of the door, um, immediately under it, we put two comparators on the middle two blocks right here. Um, and we want to right-click them so that the torch in front of it is on. Um, this means that they're in subtract mode. Then we place redstone dust all around uh, the area. Uh, this whole thing is known as an XOR gate or an exclusive OR gate. And it's what lets us do the levers on both sides and still have the door behave properly where we can open and close it from both sides. Um, this is the thing that lets us do that. Okay, so now that we have that, um, we can hook up the levers now. So I'm going to grab the lever. Um, and in the demo, I did the redstone lamps on the ground. But you don't have to do that. That was completely aesthetic. There's no reason that you have to do that. But I'll do it anyways. So immediately off of this wall. Um, so we put the wall here, uh, not including the door area. Um, immediately off of this one on the ground, I just put the lever. Likewise, on this side on the left as well, I did the same thing where I put the lever here on the furthest to the right area um, right in front of the wall. So this one's a little bit more hairy. And this is why we kind of go down by a block. Um, so this one... If I turn it on, um, we need to dodge that redstone or else what just happened will happen. Um, so this is where the lever comes in. What we need to do is grab this signal without interfering with anything. Um, and that means what we have to do is get rid of this block and put the dust one block lower. Um, so I'm sorry about that. Um, that needs to go one block lower. Uh, then we can re-put this dust back down. Um, so this is still functionally the same. Then what we do is we place an opaque block immediately above this one. Um, and it has to be op opaque. And it is just sitting on top of it. You can right-click this one to place it. Then we put the redstone dust into this block. Um, so that this redstone dust will face into this opaque block. And then what we do is we put a block here. Uh, kind of on the other side. We then put a repeater we put a repeater facing this direction um, that is grabbing the signal from this block um, and what this lets us do is grab the signal from the lever without interfering with any of the stuff down here and then we put just a redstone dust right here okay and the door closed above me <laughs> um, the other side's not as complicated luckily um, so we can still grab the signal from this side I'll flip the lever so that we can see that it's on. All we have to do on this one is place a redstone repeater on this block. Um, so like we have the lever right here, redstone dust, a redstone repeater facing this direction. Uh, and then we place another redstone dust right here. Okay, so that was a lot of stuff. Um, hopefully it was clear enough. You can check that it works by flipping one lever and it should either open and close depending on which orientation it was. You can flip it again and it should do the opposite. You go to the other side and flip it and make sure it does both. Um, you can like flip one and then run to the other side and then flip the other one just to make sure that it switches. Um, so that is what how it should work if everything went smoothly. All right, so that's everything you need for the redstone. Um, if you're like me though, and you like to fill in the blocks that can be filled in, um, I will show you how to do that and what not to do. Um, so for the floor, um, like the actual thing you're going to walk over when the door opens, um, we will put it in spruce planks here. Um, so we can just do this whole thing. Um, and I'm not going to do uh, this part yet, but I'll do this in a second. Um, so we can have our floor and the block under the wall um, can be whatever. And this one under the gold blocks here can be whatever or whatever blocks you used. The ones that go under the slime blocks, however, need to be obsidian or some other non-stick block, uh, such as like glazed terracotta. Um, so this will be obsidian, and this is just so that they don't get stuck to your door. Um, and if you fill in, uh, if I can get in there, if you fill in this block too, it also has to be obsidian, just so that nothing sticks to it. 
Um, or you could just leave it open because there's no reason. Uh, no one's going to be able to see in here, really. And then this block area can be whatever you want. And then this one could also be whatever you want. So really the only one that is different is this obsidian area on the ground. Um, same kind of deal on the ceiling. If you make a ceiling, uh, which I will just make a little outline here. We can do whatever we want on the first one and the one where the wall is. The one where the slime blocks are, we need to place obsidian. And then again, we can do anything we want on this row as well. For the walls, um, the actual walls themselves, so these walls here, we can go up and do whatever we want. The walls that are immediately next to the blocks that aren't the door also need to be non-stick blocks. Um, so I like using obsidian. So we put obsidian there. We put obsidian here. Um, and this should be everything you need to do uh, in order to close off the area that you run through for the door. Um, and it shouldn't interfere with anything. You can check it by making sure that it still opens and closes properly. Um, if you want to fill in the blocks down here, um, make sure that you don't cut off any redstone. Um, and by cut off, I mean like we have a redstone dust. It's a little hard to see, I'm sorry. We have a redstone dust here and we have a redstone dust here. If I place the block here, it'll break uh, because it cuts off the dust there. So make sure you don't do that. Uh, but otherwise you can fill anything in that you want. So we can like fill in that one. We can fill in these blocks here. Um, we can then fill in these ones. Don't cut off this one. Um, and you can fill in that one right there. Um, I think that's about as much as you can fill in. Same thing on the other side. We can go over here and kind of fill them in where we do blocks there. Uh, we can put a block here if we want. This has to be non-stick if we do that. Um, I don't actually think I filled that in properly over here. I didn't fill it in at all, in fact. We go over here. So we can fill in this block. We can fill in these ones. Make sure you don't do this corner. And we can fill in these ones and don't do the corner again. Um, and we just make sure again that it works and that I didn't cut anything off. Um, we're good. Okay. All right, guys, that'll be it for this video. Um, I hope I was able to explain everything clear enough, just given that this design is a little bit involved. Um, if you have any issues, feel free to leave a comment and give me some info of what's happening, um, and I will try my best to help, or I'll ask follow-up questions. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you next time.